Welcome back to the program. This is the big story right here on KTN News. The big story tonight is, is the IEBC, the electoral body in a quagmire. Today I have Mule Musao, Felix Udiambo and Steve Ogola. Both Felix and Steve are lawyers and they have experience on matters electoral in this country. And uh, Mule Musao is the chair ELOG, that is an election observation group. Good evening, gentlemen, and welcome to the program. Good evening. So, Steve, let me begin with you. Before you even talk about the ruling that the commissioners pegged their return on, first of all, I'd like to hear your reaction with regards to the return of the coming back of the three commissioners who had resigned four months ago only to make a comeback to anniversary towers. Thank you, Yusuf. The attempt by the three ex-commissioners to return to work is an indecent and inglorious action that must be condemned by all Kenyans of goodwill. The, the ex-commissioners cannot weaponize impunity and railroad Kenyans into believing that they are still commissioners. Mm -hmm. You cannot manipulate a judgment that is very clear. What happened in, in um, Isaiah B. Watt case, petition number 212 of 2018 before Justice Okwang, the question that was posed before that court, which involved the IBC only and did not relate to the other commissioners mm -hmm. who had resigned, Mm -hmm. was whether IBC, as presently constituted, could conduct the by-election in Baringo South. Mm -hmm. Now, there was no evidence adduced before that court relating to the resignation of the three ex-commissioners. Mm -hmm. One, because it was not necessary. This, this was a purely interpretive question of the composition of the IBC. Justice Okwany made an observation that to the extent that there is no evidence tabled before her, because the ex-commissioners were not parties to that suit, Kenyans must know mm -hmm. that the ex-commissioners were not parties to that suit, their resignation and affidavit, replying affidavit filed in the Okiom Tata suit mm -hmm. number, uh, number 160, where they state in paragraph 5 that they had actually resigned and written the, the, to His Excellency the President and even cleared, you know, and attached documents of clearance were not brought before Justice Okwan. Mm -hmm. So Justice Okwan, reading the law as it were, yes. so, was so, constrained. So, 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 so you're saying when she, uh, she made the ruling there, there was some information missing. We're going to go into yes. detail of that ruling shortly. But let me get uh, Felix's point of view on this. Felix, very quickly, your reaction with the comeback of the three commissioners? I mean, uh, st I think, first of all, uh, let me say this without any fear of contradiction. Uh, the the attempt by the commissioners to come back to the commission, and I agree with uh, Steve, they mm -hmm. are ex-commissioners, uh, is a manifestation of uh, impunity, uh, serious impunity, uh, so to speak. And uh, it should not be lost that I was on record when they resigned, as having said that the three commissioners who resigned were the very embodiment of electoral impunity and electoral authoritarianism. Uh, the law is clear, they, are, they resign and they cannot purport to come back. And uh, thank God, the public mood is very unanimous over this issue. Mm -hmm. I hope they've been following the social media, they've been following the mainstream media, mm -hmm. that the country is united uh, on the fact that they had exited the commission and therefore cannot be allowed to come back. Let me bring Mule Musao into this. Mule, you've had both uh, Felix's point of view as well as uh, Steve Ogolas. Actually, they've referred to these commissioners as ex-commissioners. Uh, as ELOG, I'm sure you've been observing what has been developing at Anniversary Towers. What's, what, what, what do you make of what's going on first? Well, thank you for having me. And first, uh, let me just do a correction. I am not the chair of ELOG. I'm the national coordinator. Oh, sorry for that. Uh, well, um, and I totally agree with the gentleman. Uh, I will also refer to them as ex-commissioners. To my mind, uh, there are four commissioners who are out of that commission, as we speak. Akombe was the first one to resign. Mm -hmm. uh, we had the three resigning. I, I, I will let Steve explain to me exactly what was on procedural uh, in terms of the resignations of those three commissioners because in my view and from an observation point of view they resigned uh, a public appointment mm -hmm. and uh, therefore they have no business getting back into that commission. Mm -hmm. And uh, Steve, I think you're the right person here to explain this to us as uh, uh, Mula has already mentioned. Yes. There's something you talked about with regards to the ruling. Let's just 
put this in simple terms uh, for our viewers. First of all, the High Court ruling that was made a while back said that the commission, the commissioners did not follow proper procedure when they tendered the resignation. But in another sort of David, the Simpson commissioners said they actually uh, sent their resignation to the appointing authority, that is the uh, president. So where's the confusion coming in here? I, I want the Kenyan public to empathize with the judge, Justice, uh, Justice Okwan, mm -hmm. what happened in her court and the legal constraints that she faced when determining the petition as to whether IBC was competently uh, constituted as to be able to manage the Baringo South by election. The question before Justice Okwan was a question of interpretation of law. The question before Justice Chacha in Okia's petition, petition number 160 and petition number 165, petition number 160 related to the refusal by these ex-commissioners to surrender IBC and state property. Mm -hmm. Then, position number 165 by Okia again, related to preservation of IBC in terms of their functional uh, continuity. But what was before Justice Okwan, which is now raising the controversy that we have now, mm -hmm. was whether IBC could conduct the election. Now, there was no evidence on record, not at all, Mm -hmm. The replying affidavit, what I'm telling the Kenyan public is that the replying affidavit filed by these uh, ex-commissioners in Okia Mtata's case were never produced before Justice Okwan. The letter of resignation to the president was never produced before mm -hmm. Justice Okwan. The Gazette notice, which the president is required to issue seven days, if you look at Section 7 of the IBC Act as amended, requires the president to gazette the vacancies within seven days. The Gazette notice, as we know, has never been issued a clear sabotage from the presidency. Mm -hmm. So in the absence of the Gazette notice, Yusuf, mm -hmm. in the absence of the letters of resignation of the president, and in the absence of the replying affidavit in the Okia Mutata case, what did you expect Justice Okwan to do? There was no evidence on record that could support the claim that this commission has had designed. The mm -hmm. judge was hard pressed to find that based on the evidence or lack of evidence before her, the commission was properly constituted. That is a technical reading of the law. Mm -hmm. What was I the, reject was, was as this, false, and Kenyans yes. must, just hold on. Yes. Kenyans must, must acknowledge this. Mm -hmm. What we reject as false is an attempt by these ex-commissioners to manipulate that judgment, to sneak back to office, and attempt to regularize a process that they have publicly admitted and acknowledged on sworn evidence in court. They have sworn in court, they have cleared, and they have shown us those documents that they have quit and they have surrendered everything pertaining the office to the commission. Mm -hmm. How then can they manipulate that judgment in a clandestine move, a very inglorious and indecent move, to attempt to assume public office? It's, it's a very false start. It must be rejected. And I want to caution these commissioners. If they are not careful, their ability to serve in any public office is significantly limited. And if they don't quit officially now, and if they don't return everything that I hear now, they have state security, their, in, their ability to seek further and future appointment to public offices will be significantly reduced and they may fade away like a witch in the dark. Mm -hmm. Now, Felix, you've had a stiff point of view there. Of course, it's given us the dynamics surrounding the rulings that were made by the High Court. Do you think there is need for the House on the Hill, the appointing authority, that is the presidency, to break the silence at least over this matter because clearly it's very much confusing and Kenyans are wondering what's exactly going on. Absolutely. And first of all, let me try to simplify what Steve was saying. And mm -hmm. I fully agree and concur with Steve. Uh, there were two petitions here. The petition that was before Justice Okwany that Steve has ably talked about. But in the Okia Umtata uh, petition, petition number 160 of 2018, uh, this, is uh, this is the petition uh, where the actual issues of resignation of these commissioners came into being. Mm -hmm. And they did the following, and I want the Kenyan public to listen very carefully and, uh, as a justification as to why they cannot come back and as to why they had actually constructively resigned. Number one, in their own sworn affidavits, they confirmed to the fact that they had actually vacated the commission, that they had resigned. But they didn't stop at that. The second thing that they did, actually before that, they proceeded to the, uh, other than their public statement of, the, of April the 15th, mm -hmm. uh, which was the first instance. That was the first thing. They actually publicly announced their resignation. 
Then they, secondly, they moved to the commission and cleared with the IEBC secretariat. It's a requirement in law that if you're vacating an employment, you must formally, uh, have, uh, I mean, uh, submit as, uh, you must be formally cleared. Mm -hmm. that, they went through that process and they were issued with the clearance certificate. The third thing then takes us to the Okio Mtata uh, petition. They actually swore a feed of it to the fact that they had actually resigned. And they did stop at that. The fourth thing is that they made a deposition in law, a written, which is a written statement, to the fact that they had communicated to His Excellency the President. Mm -hmm. The law is clear. Once they've gone, and then finally, of course, is over the last four months, they abdicated from their responsibility. In other words, they never went to the commission. Having gone through these stages and these processes, then it can only be concluded that they co resigned both constructively and actively, and their resignation are in operation. Now, it is, there is no requirement either in the IBC Act or in the Constitution that once you have tendered your resignation to the appointing authority, mm -hmm. that the appointing authority must act. Your responsibility stops at that. Mm -hmm. The minute you tender your resignation, it, it terminates your association, it terminated the association with the IEBC. Yes, I, th I think from your explanation now, the ball is squarely in the appointing authorities. Yes, and that uh, is so what I want to talk about now. Let yes. me explain Let me, what... We're almost out of time, unfortunately. Okay. Let me get Mule's point of view on this. Mule, we've had uh, both Steve and Odiambo's point of view there. Perhaps has this happened anywhere from your experience when it comes to electoral matters where, you know, commissioners resign, stay out of office for four months, only to make a comeback again? Off. And, and uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm not, I cannot agree further uh, or more with my, with my colleagues uh, and what they have explained. They have explained very candidly in terms of the law. Let me bring another angle to it. Uh, we choose um, uh, a commission. We have a number of models in terms of election commissions. We have what is a governmental model, which can be, we can locate the commission in our ministry. We can locate it um, as an independent authority, like the one we have, or we can have a mixed model. Why we choose an independent model is because you want to vest uh, integrity issues. You want to trust a commission, a public commission, uh, to hold forth for the, for the citizens. When they resign, when they turn back their backs on that seat, when they turn their backs on that particular service, then they cannot therefore be construed to be uh, bona fide commissioners anymore. And therefore, they have no, res no, no authority, no, no modus, I mean, no, no locus, sorry, uh, in terms of getting back to an office which they absconded in the first place, as, as Felix has said. So from my view, they lack integrity, and it's arrogant, it, it is a, a case of impunity by these commissioners to be able to go back to an office when they actually say it themselves and publicly so that they cannot be able to uh, continue serving in that commission. Yes, Muller, thanks for that. Now, Steve, as we conclude this discussion, speaking about integrity, this is what the three commissioners said when they made their resignation four months ago, that under Chebukati's leadership, the electoral agency's boardroom had turned into a venue uh, for peddling money, misinformation, and grounds for uh, mistrust. Those are, you know, the things that they've raised a while back. Of course, now they've made their way back to the electoral body. I mean, this is a commission that doesn't have a CEO at the moment. It's still a contentious issue there. It's minus uh, three, actually four commissioners. I mean, what does this say about IEBC? Not about IEBC, mm -hmm. but about these three ex-commissioners. Mm -hmm. It shows that, that we made a huge mistake trusting them with public office. These are thugs. Shouldn't be anywhere near IBC. If you can resign and attempt to manipulate the law and insult the public by attempting to return there, you ought not to have been there in the first place. But mm -hmm. Yusuf, I want to address something. Yes. What Senator Samson Chiaradge said must not go unresponded. Mm -hmm. Because I saw him stalking political controversy, playing politics and stalking legal controversy. And I want to appeal to Kenyans. Do not rely on the political elite because of their vested political interest. What Samson Cherargay mentioned in Sophia's interview is completely incorrect, even in law. Section 7A of the IBC Act, as amended by the Election Laws Amendment Act of 2016, mm -hmm. is very clear. The pathway there does not involve parliamentary intervention. It says, following the resignation of any commissioner, the president shall, underscore, gazette such vacancy within seven days. If you look at the first schedule of the IBC Act, 
within 14 days, the president is required to empanel a selection panel to invite applicants to fill the vacancies of those commissioners that have resigned. It is not open mm -hmm. to the presidency or parliament to manipulate those. And I've always argued and told Kenyans, be watchful and be fearful because politicians, there is what they communicate as public interest, but there is what the, the unexplained or uncommunicated private interest. I know this political, the, the political class are interested in reconstituting the entire IBC without due regard to the law. Mm -hmm. The president is at fault. The president is at fault because the law is very clear. He ought to have gazetted the vacancies following mm -hmm. the resignation. These people have said on oath that they served him with the letter. Let him come, on, let him come clean and say he was never given any letter in which case the ex-commissioners will be charged with perjury, lying on oath. Mm -hmm. Let the president also not take Kenyans for granted, I'm sorry to say. Yes. He ought to move with speed, gazette the vacancies, and panel the selection panel. The, the law is very clear. Selection panel has four people from Parliamentary Service Commission and four people from religious groups. Mm -hmm. This can be established any time, even tomorrow. So there is no opportunity for political maneuvers to try and reconstitute the entire IEBC through brinkmanship or through clevery or maybe, trick or maybe trickery. Mm -hmm. I think the political class should not talk any further the legal controversy that they're trying to create if they really want this country to hold together. Mm -hmm. Well said. And uh, Felix, you had something to say with regards to the appointing authority as well earlier? Uh, there are two things very quickly. Mm -hmm. The first mm -hmm. one is with reference to what you uh, said when mm -hmm. uh, the public statements of these commissioners when they resigned. First of all, they resigned uh, when the chairman uh, ordered an, an internal audit and suspended the CEO. So their resignation was one because of the uh, in solidarity with the CEO. Secondly, these, by their own public statements, they, made, they claimed that they had a total confidence on the leadership style of Chairman Chebukati. Now, Chebukati is still the chairman of the IEBC, and Ezra Chiloba is out of the IEBC. So what has changed to warrant their coming back? And the new audit, the internal audit that was released, has indicted the CEO and the secretary. Of course, he will be given an opportunity to respond. But I see a situation why, where he will be out for a long time. And so they have absolutely no reason for claiming to want to come back. But let me underscore the point about the selection process. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, Parliament is wrong, and I've seen a section of members of Parliament misinterpreting the law, saying that they must reconstitute the selection panel. We have had an opportunity to reflect over this issue with Steve. Mm -hmm. The IBC Act is clear. The Schedule 1 to the IBC Act speaks to filling the vacancy in the Commission in situations such as this, when there is partial vacancy, but also in circumstances where there is, uh, uh, we need to replace all the commissioners as when their terms of office expire. Mm -hmm. So the, the parliament has no role. The selection panel is provided for in law. Four people from the Parliamentary Service Commission and five people from the religious organization. Mm -hmm. And so what the president ought to have done, 14 yes. days following this vacancy, he ought to have empaneled that panel mm -hmm. uh, and kickstart the process of recon uh, filling in the vacancies. But let me s finally, let me say this. Very briefly. The colleague. timing is wrong. Mm -hmm. The timing of this, com I mean, the three commissioners coming back, I think is very wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, for all it's worth, I think the chairman has begun the process of trying to, re and I've had several meetings with him, trying to reform and strengthen the commission. Yes. Uh, quite recent, recently, there was a publication in terms of identified areas of electoral reforms that are intended to strengthen the electoral, uh, I mean, electoral ele IEBC election management. Mm -hmm. I think their timing is wrong. This cabal represent electoral impunity and they should be kept outside of IEBC. Let me, let me give Mule the last word here. Mule, as uh, much as you're going to have the last word here, can you perhaps... Uh, Tell us this, that, you know, uh, the IBC has already, has already said that these individuals have already, you know, followed the proper procedure when they were resigning. But at the moment, there's little faith in this commission from the public. What do you think needs to be done moving forward, Brief, very briefly? A number, uh, 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 one very critical issue that needs to be addressed right now is that the presidency must move mm -hmm. uh, to fill the vacancies which are there. There are four of them, and that is very clear to the uh, public. Um, I'm happy that uh, Felix, both Felix and uh, Steve have clarified any illusions that could have been in terms of the law. And, and, and that is one of the things that we are, the public needs to hear, that uh, 
uh, it is very clear that this commission has resigned. Moving forward, IEBC remains center of the electoral processes in this country. So if you are to, to continue moving towards electoral reforms, too many issues are on the plate. The Building Bridges Initiative uh, is going to address the issues doing electoral reforms. We need a, an authority, we need a, a, a commission that has integrity and that has public confidence. At the moment, whatever is happening at uh, the commission office does mm -hmm. not in any way inspire confidence in that commission and that must be addressed very urgently. Many thanks, Mule Musao, for your input there, Felix Odiambo, as well as uh, Steve Vogola. They're both lawyers. Many thanks, gentlemen, for your input. And that brings us to the end of the program tonight. Many thanks for watching. Of course, you've been watching The Big Story right here on KTN News. Up next is KTN Prime with Akisa Wandela. Stay tuned.